car in its original form, if it was restored, would be such a cool car. But none of that really matters. When you get to plop on one of these bitches, yeah! Jump in this thing and see what it'll do. two reasons I'm tearing it down right here instead of in my engine room one the engine room is completely full two there's no AC back there I got a giant swamp cooler right here so I'm gonna be doing it right here Yeah, this is gonna be like quickie rebuild. Check it out. Smurf's block is all cleaned, prepped, and ready to be assembled. As soon as parts show up, I can actually assemble this whole engine. And I'm still debating, do I use the ported 906 heads or do we go with the precious trick flow heads? Still, still debating, I don't know. I don't know if I wanna spend that much money on this engine. So, we'll see. Update time. All right, so parts are ordered for Smurf's engine. Um, I always thought this engine had dome pistons in it, or at least a slight dome, because you, I could never run the timing in this motor that I could in, like, say, the General or some of the other engines I had. So I figured this thing just had more timing. Turns out, all it was was just tons of carbon on top of the piston and in the combustion chamber, creating hot spots and boom, igniting like a diesel. Um, that's all cleaned up and like I said I'm just waiting on bearings and a few other little seals and gaskets and stuff I can't really go any farther but what I can do is some of the things on the list that I wanted to do but I couldn't because I had to pull the engine but since now I'm waiting on parts of the engine which oh yeah the new roller cam is installed um, I got all my cam bearings in it I got the freeze plug back in it we got the new oil pump on it and there it sits so tomorrow According to tracking, the bearings will be here. But for right now, what I need to do is I want to get my remote oil oil filter on here, which actually this is a really nice billet adapter. It's from MMR. So I'm going to mount that down here on the frame rail. So that way, when I do pull the filter, it'll just drain to the inside of the K-frame, that little notch right there. And what I have for an oil cooler 
is some pretty trick NASCAR shit. Yeah, a dual pass, heavy duty oil cooler. This is really kind of overkill, but I'd rather be overkill than under. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount my training cooler to this. All right, so the remote oil filter is mounted. That's gonna go right there. I heated up and recessed the uh, shield behind it, so that way I still get a little protection for the oil filter. Now, I need to mount this guy, the big end. Now this, if I can get it out, is actually a little overkill on oil cooler, but it was free and it works and it's awesome. So I went ahead and mounted electric, I made a bracket, mounted the uh, training cooler in front of the oil cooler and then I put a fan in front of the oil, in front of the training cooler. So now I am going to set this guy down in there and I'm going to make some brackets for it. And then I gotta make some lines. So brackets, lines, good. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna get on that. Bent, hammered, and forged. I'm gonna go ahead and mount it to the car. Yeah, buddy. So then I'll be done with this, then I can run cooler lines. Maybe I'll even get to the rear suspension today because I'm still waiting on engine parts for Smurfs to win. Actually, it's not even new. Rebuilt, more bester than it was before. All right, mount it. Kind of just gonna go ahead and wait till the engine is before I plumb everything. Just that we can make sure to go around everything and nothing's in the way. Um, so now that's done, and we're going to have a tunnel around with twice as many carburetors, roller cam, way better heads, so I need to upgrade the fuel system. This has a 5 16 fuel line in it. There's only, there it is in there. That is a dinky 5 16 fuel line. This is an RT. It's supposed to have a 3 8 fuel line. This is a numbers matching. Not numbers matching, but the body it matches the fender tag and the bin. So this is a real RT. But someone has stuck a 5.6 fuel line in it. So we're gonna go ahead and yank that out. All right, new versus old. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the new fuel line in the car and if the car it does need more fuel, I'll just use the new 3.8s as my return and I'll run a half inch supply up. Um, two reasons for that. Simplicity and being lazy. So it's kind of the same reason, but I'll see what works. If it doesn't work, I'll upgrade it, but for now, in and it wasn't without a cuss word or two as you can see i was elbows deep in that thing and this car ain't clean this is a dirty car see the dirty i r t y dirty girl all right well that's done next Ah, it's the next morning. All right, well, last night I went ahead and put the new sending unit in. I got the new fuel line in, I got the oil cooler, the training cooler, all that's on. I got the uh, remote mount uh, oil filter on. So that was yesterday's agenda. Today, I'm still waiting on engine parts, so I figure right now I'll tackle finally wiring up my uh, line lock. It's been in the car forever. I just never actually wired it up. I know, lazy, but so much other things to do, it was never really a big priority. I just did smoky burnouts, frying the rear brakes. So now I'm actually going to wire it up. We're just gonna put the uh, the button actually right on the front of the shifter handle. So I got the console all blown apart. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my my uh, light indicator so let me know the line lock is on and functioning. I'm gonna go ahead and put that into the illumination part of the uh, shift indicator lens. So I'm gonna drill a hole, then I'm gonna drill a hole in the backing. So 
So that way it lights up the top of my lens green. It should be pretty sweet looking. Green means go. Actually, it should be red because it's a line lock. A line lock means stop. So, but this is what came with it. So I'm using green. And actually, green actually matches all the uh, the dash lighting and everything too. So that'll work. But I'm gonna go ahead and get that done real quick. Little bit of progress. So being I'm in the desert, I wanted zero overheating issues. I want to be able to drive to Death Valley in July at 3 p.m. if I want to. I want to have that option. So using some some new stuff and some old stuff and stuff I had lying around, we've got four electric fans on this thing. Three on the radiator, one on the train cooler and oil cooler. So I just don't want to have any issues. That's all together, that's 5,000 CFM airflow. That should be most gooder to keep this thing cool. Plus, now that we'll have a tunnel ram and a big old hole in the hood. Actually, did I spoil that? I don't know if I set up putting a tunnel ram on it or not. Anyways, it's getting a tunnel ram, trick flow head, solid roller cam, dual carbs, all the goodness. So at least now with that big old hole in the hood, a lot of the exhaust from the radiator can radiate out and have somewhere to go, so that'll help with cooling too. But, uh, well, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the radiator out, wire it up, put controllers on it, so that I can cross that off the list. Actually, I have been knocking things off the list. Electric fan, high amp alternator, I'll be able to knock those two off. Actually, these three, I'll be able to knock those three off. Um, a lot, of, I might even try and do the suffering connector today. So actually, I have been knocking several things off my list. All right, well, nothing to do but do it. Promise you, you didn't miss nothing exciting. But it did turn out pretty good. So this is the fan controller for the big fan. This is the fan controller for the two small fans. This is the relay that controls the two fans. So this controller just turns the relay on, which then turns the two fans on. Kind of going overboard a little bit, more work than I really wanted to. We got the fans all wired up, that's all done. If you notice there's dangling wires here, well what I've done is I took the, uh, he the headlight harness and flipped it. So I've gotten rid of all the wiring and all the vacuum lines that run on the uh, inner fender there because I'm converting the car over to relays. So the headlights will be operated by relays. I got all my fuse panel there, which also helped, which also sends the power to the, the fan. Um, so all the wiring, this will all be prettied up once it's all done. I'm just trying to run all my wiring now, then I'll loom it all. But uh, what I'm gonna be doing is running all of my wiring and the vacuum lines across the back of the engine and then down and then over. So that should clean up the engine bay. You won't see any wiring over there. You won't see any vacuum hoses because I'm going to be getting rid of the battery here. The battery is going to be going to the trunk. So the battery is going, this vacuum canister is going. I don't need that. The General Lee has a bigger cam than what Smurf does and it still operates the headlights up and down just fine without that vacuum canister. So this has got a smaller roller cam, which has shorter duration. So it should have more vacuum, which that's fine. And so I'm gonna try and clean up all the wiring. I'll loom some of it and just get it to where it's all kind of tucked and hidden away, but I'm not trying to spend the time to make it like super like show car quality, but just trying to clean it up a little bit. And then we're also putting, like see this, uh, where's it at? I'll find it, okay, here. So here's the, the, the plug for the headlight harness. It's all brittle and breaking apart and it's just not good contact. So the new harness, I'm putting a douche connector so this will be all waterproof watertight it'll be all down here cleaned up so same thing with the uh all the trigger wires for yeah see we got this all has watertight connectors so everything's being converted to better connectors so just longevity and then i also had to fix the grill because when i was pulling the harness out the whole grill was flopping i didn't know the grill was loose so i just kind of used some old circle track parts and fixed the grill I have a whole grill harness or a whole grill hardware kit to reattach a grill, but to do it right, it's gonna take time. I pull the whole grill out, and it's just, we only needed two, so it's all solid now. 
not worrying about it. I'm gonna spend the time to finish all this up. It's gonna be a lot of boring, wiring, tedious stuff. So again, you're not gonna wanna see it. So I'll get back to you when that's all done and have something to brag about, or at least look a little better. But now that all of that is pretty much wired up, plumbed and done, it is now engine time. My bearings and all everything have showed up. So I got my main bearings, got my rod bearings. I got my uh, main bolts. Everything's cleaned up. I'm gonna clean the crank up. I'm gonna put my new bearings in and I'm gonna mic everything out to make sure it all is gonna work and not be too tight or too loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and get on that. And hopefully, I won't have a short block tonight because it's already like, what, what is it? 9.30? So, I'm just hoping to get the crank in it. If I can get the crank in it, then at least the crankshaft will be off the ground. That's more important to me. <sighs> All right, time lapse. brighter outside sun's out it's hot it's gonna be like 109 degrees today so i have moved from the sunny side to the narrow shady side I'm gonna get ready to put pistons in so i got all my pistons and rods are all cleaned up got my bearings ready to go i'm gonna do the same thing i'm gonna mic out the journals to make sure that uh, the bearing clearance is all good the crank i had two and a quarter thousandths bearing clearance so all gooders so slap the rotating assembly in get my timing chain on and then I can actually put the timing cover on I can put my oil uh, my uh, oil pickup tube on my top my oil pan so and then I can get to the glorious trick flow heads these things are beautiful this is like man diamonds oh yes and actually and for the cool chicks this is cool chick diamonds so yeah look at that but I do need to change the valve springs because these valve springs are set up for a flat tabbit cam and I've got a solid roller. So these cams, these valve springs are specced out to where if all I do is swap them, I'll have 210 seat pressure, which perfectly good. Um, I'm actually waiting for my new lifters to show up. I have some lifters uh, there. So those are solid roller lifters from Comp but David told me, uh, Freiberger, he's like, I know you, you drive your cars long distance, you thrash them, you beat on them, they're daily drivers. So I would suggest you buy bushed lip solid roller lifters. And I'm like, oh, all right, yeah, I'll, just, I'll get a set of those. And then I look up how much they are, $1,300 for a set of lifters. Oh man, so I bought them really didn't want to pretty, pretty much all of this this whole rebuild of smurf was funded by mayhem that this has this has swallowed up every penny that i have made on mayhem going into smurf mostly just the engine minor stuff with the fans the cooler and all that crap that's all minor the the uh oil filter relocator the lines the hoses that's all my oh and to get the drive shaft rebuilt that's all minor stuff compared to what the motor swallowed up so i know you guys sometimes some of you guys drive on me saying motor but i don't know like it's an engine a motor is electric i don't care i'll just whatever comes out of my mouth is what i call it sometimes i call it an engine sometimes i call it a motor anyways so i'm gonna go ahead and get this rotating assembly together so then i can make progress and hopefully get the engine in the car maybe even running by this weekend I'm, I'm hoping i'm still waiting on another carburetor to show up because we went from single carburetor to twin carburetors single 750 twin 650s uh anyway, I, david told me to put 750s on it but i'm like eh, i'll just i'll just put 650s on it more streetable better throttle response um and plus a pair of 650s combined is like equivalent to like a thousand cfm plenty for this motor so get my mics ready Ugh. so I can go ahead and start checking some bearing clearances.
And the precious pretty man diamonds right there. See, my fiance cannot understand how guys can call cars or engine parts sexy. But if you're a guy or you're a cool chick, you fully understand why cars and engine parts can be sexy. Well, the short block is all assembled. That's all done. So I even got the timing cover on it, the cams in it. It's degreed, got it set at 107. Got my chrome shiny oil pan on it, the windage tray. That's all good to go. What I need to do with these trick flows is when I ordered these, the uh, they were all out of the, the cylinder heads that have the solid roller springs on them, or at least the spring rate that I needed. So, and since I'm on a time crunch here and trick flows are back ordered again, I just went ahead and ordered springs. So these are at 1.9, which is what these springs are set at now. At 1.9, those will be 210 pounds of seat, 210 foot pound, 210 pounds at seat pressure. So the, 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 I'll get it right eventually. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap out these springs with the new ones. And then these heads are ready to bolt on to Smurf. At least Smurf's, I can't even say Smurf's new engine, Smurf's rebuilt 440. I also got some other goodies that showed up in the mail. Look how pretty these are. Ba bam Harlem Sharp roller rockers. And these are just for trick flow heads. So, again, just more monies. You are costing me a lot of monies. <laughs> but that's cars and our projects. They suck us dry. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get to swapping these springs, and then I can actually bolt these heads to this block. And then I just can't wait to mock up my tunnel ram on top of that and just be like, ah. <laughs> All right, to it. The heads have been spring swapped. So now we got the solid roller springs on the trick flow heads and the flat tappet springs are actually, or a light uh, hydraulic roller spring. They are now in the box and they're not gonna be wasted. These are gonna go on to Patina's old iron heads, but those are nicely ported iron heads. Whoever did the machine work on that actually ported them very well. So these are gonna go on those heads. I have new, uh, uh, new seals for the valve guides, so this is what will complete the valve train on Bahama. Yes, Bahama. The short block for a Bahama is already assembled and done. Now that I've got cylinder heads for it, I can build that engine. So that will actually be a good engine. It's a, it's, it's a hydraulic roller 383. The pistons are ceramic coated. Uh, I'll take these heads down and get those ceramic cords, the ceramic coated. So here's Smurf's old iron heads. And actually, here is Bahamas short block. All right. Oh, I thought this just like bitching with those tires lettered like that. Yeah. I can't wait to be driving patina and it's almost there. Just a few minor things like seats and exhaust. And I now have the exhaust for it. All right, so when I get back in a little bit, the long block will be assembled. Oh yeah. And then I can't wait. I get to see my tunnel ram on top of Smurf's engine. That has been a long awaited deal. I bought that tunnel ram for this, this car for like a year and a half ago, two years, which yeah, in the scheme of things, is not very long to wait, but I was wanting to put the 871 blower on this car, but this, this engine has too much compression. So, can't put the 871 blower on this, but I have another 440 back there with ceramic coated pistons, everything ready to go. Just a short block. And then I'm gonna be putting that 871 blower on it. I just can't afford to build it right now because, well, Smurf. All right, I'll see you in a little bit.
Most of you probably don't realize how cool of a car Smurf really is. The reason it's called Smurf is because this car was originally B5 blue, which is a bright metallic blue, white vinyl top, white RT tail stripe, and blue interior. But it also was loaded with 440, AC, console, buckets, factory tack, cruise control, power windows, rear defrost. I mean, this car was loaded. It still has all that too. Power windows, the factory tack, there's the console, wood grain wheel. I mean, someone has switched it to black interior, but I'm gonna be switching it back to blue because the blue would be much better. But yeah, this car in its original form, if it was restored, would be such a cool car. But none of that really matters. When you get to plop on one of these bitches, yeah. <laughs> on parts though i can't quite put the whole engine together actually the top end just mocked up there's no rockers in it there's no lifters in it there's no uh push rods and the intake's just sitting on top of it along with the carburetors because i'm waiting on lifters the only thing i'm waiting on is lifters i got the solid roller lifters and they're the push type 1300 stinking dollars for those lifters and that's all I'm waiting for, to complete the masterpiece of Smurf's new tunnel ram, badass, old school of awesomeness. So once that I get the lifters and I can... Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and put the engine in the car before I get the lifters. Normally, I don't wanna do that. Normally, I'll put the lifters in, and normally I'll assemble the whole engine, and then I'll just kinda test it for oil pressure just to make sure everything's good. Um, but I, I know it's good, so I'll just go ahead and base it. I got a port, I got that list here. I got actually, there's quite a few things I can scratch off of this now. Let me see. Yep, it's got a roller cam. Yep, tunnel ram, timing chain. Yeah, hell of a lot more than timing chain. This is the old list. There's been a lot of things that have been added to this list. Actually, there's been a lot of things that I've just done because the engine needed it and we didn't even bother with the list because this was the old list. The new list had one item on it, rebuild engine. Well, the car has done a lot, the car has gotten a lot more work done to it since then. But, let's see. Two things I wanna to do today. Left, subframe connectors. Just like Mayhem and Patina. I want to put subframe connectors on this thing. So that's a must today. And I need to port the intake today. So that way, and what I mean port the intake, let's go ahead and pull these new brawlers off. Go ahead and set that baby right there. It is, it's kind of crude in there. You can see how there's, it's just not, it needs the whole, the runners need to be port matched to the plenum. And then when I'll flip it upside down and then I'll gasket match it just to make sure that the, uh, intake runners or gas the gasket match so that way they'll fit the cylinder head cool oh. oh this thing looks pretty don't it you should see it in the sunlight in the sunlight because everything's cleared and everything it all just glistens it's just like the giant man diamond i just want to put it i just want to replicate it and put it on my finger oh bitching <laughs> Thank you. 
All right. So the intake plenum is all ported. Looks beautimous. Now I'm on to the intake runners. Just gonna port match. Just gonna make this slightly smaller than the uh, intake runner on the cylinder head. Smaller, better, bigger, bad. So. All right, so porting the intake is done. That took a lot longer than I thought, but it had to be done in order to get the most performance out of that intake. And how I had done porting the runners is we just matched this up to the cylinder head, line up the bolt holes, and then we did the same thing to the intake manifold. Line up the bolt holes and then port match it. So that way, when I use the gasket to line both the intake and the cylinder heads up, I know they will perfectly match. And then the run or the uh, the plenum that was ported basically like eight mini velocity stacks inside the intake manifold, so it'll all be most gooders. So now that that is done, now I got to get on to the grungy work of doing the subframe connectors. Now, after these subframe connectors are welded in, then I'm going to go ahead and plop this engine back inside Smurf. Go ahead and complete the process. So there's a there's a slight snag on me putting subframe connectors on this car and I can't even believe I overlooked it. But I crawled underneath the car so I can start cleaning all the factory over or uh, undercoating off Smurf and everything. And then I realized, oh yeah, Smurf has bitchin' boom tube side exhaust, which is right in the way of the rear frame rails. So now I've got to thunk of something else. I'm still gonna do the front. I'm gonna do the front half. I'll probably just cap it off right at torch support. And then I'll figure out a way, and I'll figure out a way to go around the uh, exhaust, maybe up and over, notch the floor pan, whatever. Cause I'm not getting rid of my bitch and boom tube NASCAR exhaust system. So that's gonna be a later date. Probably when I pull the carpet out, I'll finish that. But for right now, at least I'll have the front half done so time to clean some undercoating the crappy part subframe connectors are welded in the reason they're mini is because like I said before my boom tubes is in the way so I'm gonna have to wait till I pull the carpet out so I can go above the boom tubes and then through the carpet and then if you'll notice here I blanked it so then I'll just weld to the back of this that way it'll complete my subframe connector these is most better is that way it welds through the torsion support and then it connects all the way to where it arches up to the front frame rail. All right, so now that that is done, nothing left to do but go ahead and drop my beastly tunnel ram engine, oh, I love you, into Smurf. So 